Um, we just hit the recording button. Good energy. I appreciate everybody joining the class. So today we're just um, going to have a quick um, option beginners class. And then um, after the class, we'll have a Q&A, um, just questions and uh, just answer questions and um, get everybody up to speed, just in case you don't understand some of the things that we're talking about. I'm going to stop sharing my camera. I'm going to share my uh, screen. All right, and bear with me. I'm doing this on the phone. So, all right, uh, I'm gonna take you over to the Discord and show you things on the Discord so you can have a visual. So, when we're talking, and I did forget to say, please mute your mics. Let me not stop recording my phone. Let me go over here and make sure everybody's muted. All right. And as you come in, I have the settings where it's muted. If you're not muted when you're coming in, and I know nobody that's not coming in can't hear me at the moment, but please do mute your mic. All right. So when we're talking about options, right, um, we're, we're not talking about like credit spreads and things of that nature. Uh, soon there'll be some uh, analysts that uh, will be teaching everybody else and even myself um, how to how to um, how to effectively uh, do credit spreads and debit spreads. Um, I do know that Jordan does know how to do it, but real quickly, when it comes to calls, uh, one thing I want to say when it comes to options versus options. So let's think about it like this: If we was to purchase an option, um, a stock, right? Let's say Bank of America. Uh, what's on my screen right now? Bank of America and purchase one share uh, at $36.81. If Bank of America goes up $1 to $37.81 and we're in shares, we have made a dollar on each one of our shares. Or if we have one share, we have now made a dollar. When it comes to options, the easiest way to explain that is when you're buying an option, whether it's a call or a put, if it goes your direction, um, if the underlying stock goes up a dollar or the underlying stock goes down a dollar, no. whether put means that uh, you have the potential of making a hundred dollars, right? That's what normally, that's how I learned it. And that's what a lot of people normally hear. But once you start into the metrics of trading options, you start understanding the Greeks and then you start understanding why they say if the underlying stock goes up a dollar, um, trading options, you have the possibility of making $100. It's true, but it just depends on the stock that you're trading, right? So real quick, I'm on Robinhood. I don't use Robinhood to trade. Um, I'm still kind of in my own little phase of growing out of Robinhood. Um, I still use them to go to their Greeks, their, their platform and their interface is just user friendly. And I use them for a lot of different things um, for my trading, right? So I'm on Bank of America. If you were to go to... America, just go to the to the search up here. You'll type in B A C, and you can even type in Bank of America, and it'll pop up. Um, that's the ticker. You'll click the ticker down here. You'll click trade. We're not buying shares. So you'll click trade options if you have it enabled, right? Um, so now, real quick, let's just talk about what's a call and what's a put. So I have it on the put side right now, but let's go to the call side. And that's right here, how I had it, how I had it on put and calls. Just know that you have to switch back and forth depending on what we call out. If we call out a, a strike price um, for a call or a strike price for a put, just know that you have to change that where it says buy and sell. We only buy, we, don't, we never sell, right? So um, when it comes, uh, the difference between a call and a put is we. whenever you see us talking about calls or even using the terminology going long, that means that we're bullish. That means that we believe that the stock is going to go up, right? If we ever use the terminology put or we put out a, a trade with a strike price with a put or a P by um, beside of it, that means that we believe, or if you hear the terminology short, that means that we believe that the stock is going to go down, right? Um, now, whether 
depending on the strike price that we choose. And when I say strike price, I am meaning how you see $37 call, 37.5, 38, 38.5. All of these are strike prices, right? So if we, if I was to go for the 37.5 call right here, that doesn't mean that we believe that the stock is going, going to go to $37.50 or higher, right? That's just the strike price we're choosing, but we do believe that the price will get closer to that, right? But the reason I'm explaining it like that, we might grab, and I'm, we're not going to do this on Bank of America, but we might grab a 40 point five call, right? And that's nowhere near to the share price that you see all the way on the bottom. That's that share price, $36.81. That's nowhere near it, right? So we don't want people to have the expectation when you're getting into options that your contract has to go into money or that it has to get to that strike price. In options, if you get in at a good entry point and it continues to move in your favor, you will continue to make some money, right? Um, and it's the same thing for the put side. Um, now, one thing I do want to talk about is what is at the money, what is out the money, and what is in the money, right? So, money. And if, hey, if you don't mind, can you please mute your phone or mic? Thank you. Um, the thirty-seven dollar, the thirty-seven dollar call, the strike price. That is going to be considered the one I just click at the money, right? And the reason it's called it's considered at the money is because it's closer to this strike price right here that you see in the middle, right? And and it's also closer to being in the money. Anything below this strike, uh, this share price is going to be considered in the money, right? And you can tell also by seeing the premium all the way right here that it says zero point thirty eight cents you'll also see that the premiums are going higher and higher and higher and higher, right? At the, um, in the money, like I was saying, is anything below the share price. At the money is gonna be this $37 call. Some people look at this 37.5 call to be at the money as well. I look at anything above, um, young boy, but uh, can y'all please mute your mics? Thank you. Um, this 37.5 call right here um, with a premium of four cents, that one's to me and to a lot of other people, it's gonna be considered out the money. Anything from 37.5 call and up is considered out the money, right? It's not at the money and it's not close to being in the money, right? It's not to say that the strike price that are out the money won't go in the money, right? And it's also not to say that the strike prices that are in the money won't go out the money, right? So one thing that I didn't mention is, so how you're seeing these premiums, the one that says 30 set, this one right here, right? I just put it on the watch list on accident. This one right here, um, the premium is 0 0.14. Please keep in mind that this contract is not gonna cost you 14 cents, right? It's gonna cost you $14 and Always, if you was to go buy one and used to put one contract right here, it's going to say $14. And the reason being is because we're trading options. So in each one of these strike prices, all these contracts, you're holding 100 or you're borrowing 100 shares at one time, right? So you'll multiply it by, by 100, and that's how you'll get $14. So each one of these contract prices will cost you 14 bucks instead of 14 cents. Right. Um, hey, Moody. Uh, Angela Soto has a question. Oh, I'm gonna get to all the questions um, after the class. So, I okay, sweet. Yeah. Um. So, uh, where was I? Where was I? Boom, 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 boom. All right. And then before I, I get to the Greeks, something else I wanted to talk about. Um. Well, let's go to the push side. It'll flow with me. So when it goes to the put side, anything that's above now is, is the opposite of the calls. Anything that's above, like this $37 call, this 37.5, all of these are going to be considered at the money. Anything above this uh, share price on put side is going to be at the money. All of this, I mean, in the money. Sorry, apologies. 
So anything above the share price is going to be in the money. The 36.5 call right under the share price will be considered at the money, right? When we're going for puts. And then anything below that is going to be from the 36 put down is going to be considered out the money. All righty. So before I go into talking about the Greeks or anything of that nature, what I want you guys to also keep in mind are expiration dates. So expiration dates, um, I look at them just like how we say the trend is our friend. Expiration dates are our friends, right? Because we're not buying none of these contracts. We're only borrowing, right? We're only borrowing these contracts because if you're buying them, you will be a owner of the company, a partial owner, and you'll be invested into the company. And that's basically what you receive when you invest into the stock side of the um into the stock side of the market, right? When we buy shares, we own a piece of the company, right? So that's the only reason I like to look at contracts like we're just borrowing them, right? Because we have an expiration date on it. So Real quick, I have it on Bank of America here um, for a reason, um, because Bank of America is a small account builder. Tomorrow will be Friday, so this will turn these contracts into zero DTEs, right? One thing that you need to keep in mind is majority of all these contracts from, I would say, 38 call are dead. You should not touch those. If you touch these, you should know how to trade, and you should be looking for these contracts to go from $2 to maybe $5 or even possibly $6 and take your profits, right? Loading up the boat. Reason being that you see that there's 11,000 open entrants on those contracts, right? And you see the volume where people are just in and out, in and out, in and out, um, taking all their, taking their profits when they can, or I wasn't looking at the uh, market too much today. It could have been them taking some losses and uh, exercising some risk management, right? So, one thing is, um, I'm going to talk about the expiration dates, but I'm going I'm to start talking about the Greeks so it can tie it in. So before I get into the Greeks, look at this. Just keep in mind that we're going to look at this $37 call and we're going to look at this $37.5 call, right? It is June 3rd. This, the $37.5 is worth 4 bucks a contract. The 37 is worth 14 bucks a contract, right? If we move over to June 10th, the $37 call now is worth $48 versus 14 bucks. And this one is verse oh, is $29 versus four bucks, right? Now, if we go to the next week, you see how the premiums continue to go up, right? The $37 call now is, is 79 versus 48 bucks, right? And then the 37.5 call is worth 56 bucks, but it's also, um, what you gonna call it? versus 29 bucks what i was going to say also with is that i keep in mind you see the percentages under it it says negative um let's look at the 37 point the 37 dollar call that one is is up today 1.12 right the 37 five call is down negative 0.45 percent now let's just look at the percentage of of these contracts, right? How they flow today, because they're just showing you what it did today versus the ones on June 10th. From being up 1.28% on this contract, you would have been down 7% already, close to 8%. The other one, 14% versus 3%. Now let's take it to these, 26%, 55%. You see the difference? in between picking a, a uh, an expiration date and knowing the difference between, hey, let me not try to grab these cheap, cheap contracts just because I see they're super cheap, right? I, I, I got stuck there before too. Like, no, they're, they're just super cheap. I can buy more. I'm gonna just go with these. But when you don't understand this all the way at the bottom, when it says the Greeks, you're gonna lose a lot of money. A lot, a lot of money, right? So you can still do the same thing. These are cheap as well, right? But it, check this out. We went all the way to June 17th. Now, if I was to take you further to June 24th, look at that. 
the further you go out, the better your contracts start looking. And I'm just looking at the percentages. Why? Because you're giving yourself enough time to let the trade play out. Did you, anybody see? I, I wasn't looking at it, but we could pull up the charts and you, we, we can see it, how bad or how much Bank of America fell. They fell, but why none of these contracts went negative? Right? It's not a lot. There's nobody holding these. Two people got out of those, but that that's not the case. 362 got traded. That's not the case. It's just about the fact that it has enough time in those contracts. So these contracts are not just going to fall like that. Just because it may go down 50 cents, it's not going to lose a lot of its value. But it goes the same way where if it goes up 50 cents, it's not going to gain a lot of value, right? In these contracts, you'll want to load up more. Now, I'm all the way in July 22nd. And I'm going to bring you all the way to the, to, to the beginning. But now let's talk about the Greeks. So... Keep in mind, I'm all the way in uh, this, this July the 22nd, right? So when we're looking at the Greeks, let's look at Delta, Gamma, Theta, Vega, and Rho. That, that is your Greeks. This is going to let you know how much money you can make. Um, it's going to help you with your risk management. It's going to let you also know how much money you can lose and potential, uh, potentially lose, right, or potentially gain. And it's also going to let you know for a fact how much money you will lose per day, right? So real quick, um, I'm going to explain it this way. And it, I learned it from a girl named, uh, I forget her YouTube name, but it's like the black girl option something, but I'll show you guys. So Delta, I like to look at Delta like a car, right? Delta basically is letting you know what is the top speed of your car. So if your car goes 260 miles an hour, that is your Delta, that is your top speed, right? So gamma is like letting you, a gamma is the acceleration to your vehicle, right? It is, it is uh, either decreasing or increasing the, the, the rate that your Delta starts to go up, right? So I look at gamma like, it's its own special Greeks to Delta because the rest of them tie in together, but Gamma helps your Delta the most, right? Um, and then another thing to keep in mind is um, Theta. Theta is going to be your time decay, right? Theta is letting you know how much money you are going to lose if you choose to swing these contracts per day right and also theta also gives you a mindset uh well a good awareness of how much money you can possibly possibly lose throughout that day because if your theta is extremely high that means that if the stock moves the opposite way on a sharp move that you can lose a lot of value to your contract as well as vega I don't really talk too much about Vega and Roe because I still have to do my due diligence. And I know y'all been hearing me say that, but I'll be busy, but I promise you I will. Um, but Vega is the volatility of your contract, right? It's letting you know how volatile it is, but also if your volatility is high, the Vega, you can lose a lot of money on that contract. It kind of works a little bit like the IV right? Like if your IV is super high and then you start losing IV, you get IV crushed, right? Um, instead of being the other way around, when if you was to get in at 32.46 and your IV is right there and it's a, it starts to run up, it works in your favor actually, right? So vice versa. Row really starts to affect your yearly contracts and your leap contracts with a lot of time on it. Um, please do some due diligence behind that, but definitely just ask me a question because it's going to make me hold myself accountable and I'm going to just go do the due diligence and answer your question, right? So now um, I'm going to bring it all the way over here and I'm going to talk about the Greeks one more time. So we're going to go to June 3rd, zero DTE. The contracts that, well, it'll be zero DTE tomorrow, the contracts that everybody likes to buy because they're cheap or buy them around Thursdays or Wednesdays because they're getting cheaper, right? So we're going to, so if we look at the Greeks, Delta 
um, and I didn't explain it like this um, in the other one, just so I can bring you up to speed over here. Delta says, and Delta is 0 0.3282, right? So that means that you have the possibility of making $32.82, right? Now your gamma reads 55, well, 0 0.5505, right? So gamma is letting you know that you have the possibility of making $55.05, right? This is a zero DCE contract. Um, and this is why a lot of people play them. Now your theta is letting you know that it is $14.56, negative 0 0.1456, right? And I should have said this in the beginning, whether you're looking at calls or puts, your vega will, your theta will always be negative, right? And when you're looking at the put side, um, they'll, be, they'll be negative, but you look at them in the same mannerism, right? So um, before I speak about it in this form, now that you understand how much money you're able to make and lose, and no, they don't, Moody, because you didn't say it. Uh, now that you know you're able to make $55 on one side and $32 on another side, you add both of those numbers up. Anytime you're looking at your contract, you're supposed to add delta and your gamma up, and that tells you how much money you're going to make. So let's go ahead and pull out our, cal our calculator. 3282, 5502. 3282 plus, oops, plus, dang, 3282 plus 55. What was it? 05. So, so you, ooh, I like those numbers. Um, 8787, right? So you have the possibility of making $87.87, right? With if you chose to swing this now, the way you're supposed to do it is automatically subtract $14.57. If you chose to swing it, right? 14.57. So you really have the possibility of making $73.33, right? And that's how you also supposed to look at your swings, right? Because that's what you're going to lose automatically a day, right? But that's letting you know, like, okay, I believe that the stock is going to go up a dollar and you're going to calculate it like that, right? Now, if you just want to know, like, let's say the premium, this is one thing I will show you. This is also how I know how to choose contracts. This contract is going to cost me $14 and the data is for, I don't even have to do the math for that. The data is $14.58. Why would I choose to buy this contract today and swing it tomorrow? Just doesn't make sense. Unless I am 100% sure that this is going to gap up or that this is going to go up a dollar and 50 cents. It just doesn't make sense for me to buy it because my theta right here where it says it says that I'm going to lose $14.59 for swinging it. So how much is this contract going to be worth tomorrow? 37 point, this $37 call. It's going to be worth $1. Right? Or when the market opens, depending on where the price is at, it's going to be worth anywhere between seven bucks, five bucks. It's going to be down, super, super down. Right? Um, let me see what else was I going to talk about. All right. Um, now, one thing that I would say too, when it comes to wanting to day trade, you can, I look at, this is how I look at my expirations, weekly contracts, day trade scout. Next week's contract, day trade swings. Next week contract, you can day trade or swing. And it goes the same way for the rest of all of these. You can day trade them or swing them, right? The further you go out, more, more so like swings, right? Um, and you can capitalize on a day trade as well. Like if you're working or something of that nature and you just can't watch your trade and let's say you wanted to grab this $37 call. Let's look at this. It says $48.35, right? And your gamma is $12.56. Off rip, you're making, boom, $58, 68. I mean, not 68, but $60. So about $61 and some change, right? that you're going to be making if this underlying stock goes up a dollar. But the one thing that I like about these contracts is the fact that they move even slower. This stock already moves slow, but they move even slower. So if it goes the opposite way on me, one, I have time on the contract. So I can choose to wait. Why? Because look at my theta. 
It's only two dollars and it's only two dollars and twenty-four cents. You'll make two dollars and twenty-four cents Bank of America running 15 cents. You know what I'm saying? So it's about also understanding the the, the five-day change and also what they run a day. But what does this stock normally move? Again? It moves 70 cents, this move 60 cents, right? You want to keep all that in mind and it'll help you trade um that stock um as well uh boom boom all right i'm gonna start answering questions so my mind can start flowing because i'm like kind of stuck i'm like okay i know there's so much i want to uh tell y'all but um i am a little pressed with time but uh i'm just trying to remember everything but let me go to the chat and y'all can unmute yourselves and start asking questions hold on let me go to the chat Y'all come mute yourself. I ain't gonna tell y'all all day. Let me see. Reminder. I have a question. I'm sorry. Um, when you said you can add the delta and the gamma together, and you have a potential, I think the price was like 87.87. Is that per dollar move? Hello? Hello. Yeah, it seems like we lost Moody. Let me uh find out what's mm -hmm. going on. Y'all stand by. D-Wiz, you calling me, bro. Um, I think my mic, my, my phone just went muted. Somebody was trying to call me. Hey, if y'all can still hear me, can somebody unmute yourselves yeah, and let me know? Yeah, we can still hear you. Yeah, we can oh, hear you. Oh, okay, I got to turn up my thing. You, went, you were muted, and uh, that's why D-Wiz was trying to call you. Yeah, I was trying to call you, bro. Yeah, for some reason, like you was, we couldn't hear you at all. But your mic wasn't muted on I am, for whatever reason. Okay, just let me know. I'll turn off my Wi-Fi if need be. Yeah. yeah. So I, I have though. a question. I'm sorry. Um, we were discussing how you add the delta and the gamma together, and I think the figure was eighty-seven, eighty-seven. So that's your potential profit. Is that per dollar the stock increases? Uh, yeah, when you add it up, yes, yeah, per dollar the stock increases. Every time the underlying stock goes up, you will make, if it's saying you'll make 87 bucks, 50 bucks, you will make that every single time the, the underlying stock goes up a dollar. But the beauty of the nature to understand is we don't need that thing to move up a dollar, right? Once you start understanding the Greeks, you're like, okay, I just entered in right now at zero point four uh at fourteen dollars a contract, right? Um, and you know for a fact that it's bullish, you're going up, you jumped in on on a green candle for lack of lack of uh trying to explain it, and then you see that the contracts continue to move up. So just because you're looking for it to move a dollar, don't always look at that, depending on what stock it is, right? Because it might not move a dollar. But if you bought enough contracts and this guy moves, let's say you can see the low of the contract right here. It says low. It was at six dollars at one point. It then went all the way up to 19 bucks. That's a bag. You know what I'm saying? A ten dollar move on a contract to me is a bag. And that's just me. And that's how I look at it. Why? Because I didn't have the money in the first place. And depending on how many contracts I got, that's going to be anywhere between a hundred to a thousand dollars for me. Does that make sense? Yes. I want to make sure. So, okay. Where it says low, it's like six. That's literally $6 and the high is $19. Correct. Because it's a hundred contracts. Is that how we're reading it? 
Correct. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for bringing all that up. So I can just go over this because that's what I was forgetting. So volume, where you see it says volume, that is going to be how many contracts have been bought and sold the same day as a day trade, right? The open entrance is also going to let you know how many contracts are still being held since the market opened from yesterday. So people are still, 9,000 9, contracts are still being held, right? So one thing that I would say, I remember someone asking a question on um, the live one day and they had asked me what's more important, the open entrance or um, the volume? Well, they're both important. And then, you know, I had to sit with that question for a while, um, but it's really the, what's gonna identify the importance of which one, it, which one for you at that moment is going to be, what are you trying to do? If you're day trading, then the volume shall be more important to you because that's going to let you know that there's volume in this contract, there's people buying and selling these contracts and they're getting in and out right and it's liquid because you're seeing the open interest have people holding not well not well there is people but that's how many contracts are being held now if you're swinging and you're choosing to swing open entrance shall be more important because you want to have liquidity in uh those contracts to be able to get out does that make sense All right, hopefully it does. I'm not, uh, can y'all still hear me? Yes. Yes, we can right. hear you. Cool, awesome. So, um, chance of profit, I really never uh, looked into it. I'd be seeing 25, I don't look at that, because I'd be like, what, you telling me 25%? I'm going to make, man, stop playing with me, man. But uh, long story short, your high is letting you know how high this contract has been at one certain point this week, and the low is how low the contract has been. been. Mm -hmm. At, at one certain point of this week, please watch these contracts because the market will manipulate and lie to you. They will not tell you how many contracts actually got traded. Please mute your mic. I done got in and out of trades and never seen my contracts going into the volume side. I didn't had contracts that when the market opened, I did not see it reflect. It stood like, say, if it says 6,567, I seen it reflect just like that. And then maybe in a couple of days, it changed. I've also seen, let's see. Um, well, I'll have to go to a different stock. Oh, let's go to the put stock. Let's go to this one. Uh, the low, dang, it's not going to do it. It's just because this stock got beat up. But um, I'll show it to you on a different stock. But and if I can't find it, but you'll see sometimes the high of a contract is say nine, nine is not is at 19 bucks, right? But then you'll look at the contract and it'll really be sitting at 23 bucks, but they will not record it on here. And then you'll see this contract that was sitting at 23 bucks go down to a low of 17 bucks, and then they'll keep it right there. And you will never know that this contract went up high, right? Because I was just studying and studying and studying. This is when I was doing a lot of uh, research behind um my boy Jordan and everything that he's doing um because i was learning from a certain individual uh but yeah long story short where it says last traded that lets you know um the last contracts or few or how many ever contracts got out of the market and where they got out of right so the last traded of this contract was at 0.13 right they couldn't get out at 14 uh possibly because the market just wouldn't have had let them out and they wanted that extra dollar. So they went ahead and just did another limit order for 13 and was able to get out that trade, right? Um, the mark is letting you know where the actual contract is at the moment. So when you're looking at your Greeks and looking at everything, you could just look right here where it says 14 and you will know that that is your mark, right? Um, the bid and ask is letting you know that the bid is at 13. The ask that they're asking for this contract is at $14. You can go for the ask at $14. That is not to say that they will let you in the contracts. Nine times out of 10 on a small account builder on a, uh, on a slow stock that on a stock that moves pretty slow, they will let you in or fill you in a, a little later. Um, me, I normally, I, I only do limit orders even when I'm entering or I'm exiting. Uh, my stop losses I also use on trading views, but another way that I do use a stop loss, but it's, it's really 
a safety mechanism for me. It's like when I'm on my TD or mirror trade account, um, when I buy contracts, I'll automatically know that I want to sell like 15 off the rip, right? Or 10 off the rip. So what I will automatically do is go and put a sell limit order for say if the contract I got in at 14 bucks and I see that we're moving, I'll put a sell limit order in at like 22 or 24. Well, if it's at 14, I'm gonna put it in at like 24, right? 24 or 27. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and take, take some profits off the table, let those 15 contracts go ahead and do what it do. And those are going to fill and I'm going to still be in my play because I have more contracts, but that's, um, that's what I do. But sometimes I don't want to get out my trade. And even when I call out a trim it's an automatic trim, because by the time I try to go move my uh, limit order up, like say if it was going up to 24, like 23 and I'm about to get kicked out my trade and take some of my profits, I'll go back into my sell limit order. I'll cancel it, go back in and I'll put it at like, 29 and by the time i do that sometimes boom it kicks me out of my trade but i don't really caring because my trade didn't go red and i took some money home to the family um let me go to the chat uh does anybody else have any uh other questions um where was yeah i got a question yeah I have a question. Um, if you i mean you you went over the greeks and told us like that's part of how you choose your contracts but like how do you choose like how do you how do you discern i guess this is a little bit different but how do you discern if it's going to be a call or a put the bad boys right here these these candles i don't know what's going on These candlesticks right here. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Okay, cool. So I got a question for you now. Looking at the charts, do you think this trade is going up or going down? It's gonna help me help you. Uh, there's no trend line, but it looks like it might go down. But that engulfing candle is. That green engulfing looks like it might rebound, but it looks like it's going down. All right, cool. Show me where you saw an engulfing green candle because I don't see one. I see this one right here, but I don't see another green engulfing candle. Um, it's the I'm looking at I'm I'm disregarding the wick on the red candle for the uh, right. Yeah, right there. That's definitely not an engulfing candle. That is an inside bar. The reason is the inside candle is because this candle did not break the low of this candle or the high of the previous candle. This candle right here is in considered an engulfing candle because it broke the previous low and the previous high. This candle here also is an engulfing candle because it broke the low and the high. Just like this one you would think is an engulfing candle but it's definitely not. It is just a, well, mm, I'll call it a spinning top. It, it's like this, this candle right here is just longer. It has, it has more price action to it, right? But um, long story short, uh, engulfing candles are like this three bar. It has to break the previous of the next candle. Like this is not an engulfing candle. I forgot what they call this pattern. It's like, I can't pronounce it. It's like, Hummerish. Maro Bizu or something like yeah. that. Bizu, bullish. Yeah. Well, that boy be studying. I like you. But yeah, that's what it is. Something that, but it's a yeah, I'm trying to be on it. I just wanted to hear what you thought about, um, you know, trying to figure out, you know, call the puts because I'd be, I be wrong every time. Nah, so look, I'm going to help you out. So um, let's say you didn't ask this question, but uh, I'm going to just make believe you asked me, how do I pick the strike price, right? Like, how do I know to go for this 37.5 call? It's because the candlesticks are letting me know that. We're sitting at 36.69, right? Let's go ahead and take it over to the daily chart. Well, I don't know why my phone going so slow. Pardon me. Oh, it froze. Stop playing with it. You it's this Zoom app. It's, it's got my, I can't even send the email right now. 
Nah, man, they don't want it's the government, man. They don't want me to be great. They don't want y'all to be great. <laughs> I'm talking, I'm talking. All right, so boom, me looking at this, what I love about it is that I feel like it's going to be a 2-2 reversal tomorrow, back up to the upside, right? Because we got a bullish pin bar, right? It's a recovery of bullish pin bar too because it dropped all the way down to this low, took out this target, took out the target it needs to, and then recovered for the rest of the day, right? So what I'm going to look at is what's the potential? take it over to the week what's the potential we have only moved 32 32 cents this whole entire week but we went to a high of 37.57 you saw that what was the call though 37.5 right so we went to a high of 37 points uh 37.7 right that was the trigger to enter trades and that's one thing i've noticed a lot about the strat it a trigger entry and then next week It'll give you that move, right? It's just triggering that entry and then there's a whole bunch of accumulation and things of that nature that's happening, right? But you're still too up. So another thing that I'll do is, what's the high of this? Obviously 37.53. So that's the high of the, of my week. Am I far from that? No, I'm only a dollar away from that, right? Because I'm at 30 and it's a little less than a dollar, right? So let's go back to the charts. I was on a four hour, let's go to the one hour. So we could go ahead and find targets. That's a target right here, the top of this candle, right? That's another target. Now, what I do also is look at my candlesticks, right? And look at support and resistance. If we hit this target, right? Take out this target and normally it'll trace back down, come off of this support, right? This is a weekly opening level. So it's a support for the week at the moment, right? So what I'm also seeing is, you see this dotted line? Just keep your eyes on this one. When we come over here, it rejects, it rejects. But as soon as we start closing above it, it'll, it'll retrace and look what happens. This is the hourly candle, but we'll automatically always go right back up if we stay bullish, right? I'm seeing a lot of bearish patterns right here because this is like a head and shoulder, shoulder, head, shoulder rejection and kept going up right so <clears throat> it's also strong you know what i'm saying and even though i saw that head and shoulders right here you can also see it right here shoulder head shoulder right came down to his neckline broke neckline came down to a support and now it's pushing back up so that's what i look at like and then i'm also looking at the rsi it's flirting and playing to want to break what is my four hour doing is flirting and not wanting to break to the downside. But my hour is flirting and wanting to break to the upside. That is letting me know that we're in bullish reversals, right? We go down to the 30 minute, beautiful, nice range. We just got for resistance, right? Cause this is where you buy calls. And I should say that um, real quick before I keep explaining on this and I go answer questions, hopefully I explained it. But basically, you know, I'm just looking at support and resistance, seeing that, OK, we can get back to 37.50 call. Right. So I'll go ahead and maximize on this one. Right. But most likely I'll trade the next week one. Right. But you, you can maximize on the 37.5. And when I say maximize, put majority of your capital into that one. Um, I normally like to trade one or two trades at a time. Right. Sometimes I'll do three. But um what you gonna call it you'll want to maximize most on this one and then you know put a little bit of, put a little bit into this one as well because this one's going to give you quick money quicker right but this one will really um lo load you up and it's because of your gamma your, you see your gamma is at 30 all uh, 30 point oh 30 zero four and look at your delta 1216 look at this one so you are you do you do you get it like as soon as this one goes right here that's your Greeks. These Greeks right here turn into this one. Mm -hmm. You dig? So that's yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you. Yeah. Numbers now. <laughs> um, dang, what was I going to do, though? Uh, I was about to do something. I got sidetracked. Um, I forgot. It had come to me. You were going to talk about how theta affects all that. I was gonna talk about because <laughs> I'm curious. That's my that's my question. So you talked about that. 
the delta and the gamma, but how's the theta the negatively affect all that? How, um, in what aspect? Well, you, you said earlier, um, uh, theta is the loss. It's basically what, how it's affecting your contract, right? Going into expiration. Mm -hmm. And so if you have, if your delta and gamma added together, let's say, you know, again, on your example was 87, 87, minus your premium, you got a number, but you also have theta working against you at 1466. Mm -hmm. So my question is, do, do you subtract theta from all, all that then as well? No. So when you're swinging, when you see me subtract it from the 87.87, that was yeah. mindset of me choosing to swing it for the next day. Right. Next and that's day. correct. Yeah. So I subtracted that 1452, I believe it was, but mm -hmm. I also said I wouldn't swing this one just because the contracts are at 14 bucks. So it's basically letting me know that I'm giving my money away. If I don't see the stock, potentially gapping up or going up a dollar and some change now to um also answer your question like say if you're day trading now right if you're day mm -hmm. trade um and that dealt that theta is at like 14 bucks this right here um let's say this is 9 30 this is uh, around market opening right here it theta is working at your favor right even though it's a little bit of consolidation right here it's still the beginning of the market it's still working at your favor right here right oh and i'm on the 30 minutes i was on a five sorry so long story short data for that day was still working in your favor these look this is the best thing i can say right here and of course this is a big drop this is going to kill your theta right but uh, i mean it's going to kill your contract theta is going to rob the heck out of your contract it's going to take everything back away but let's just say that you got in and we're not going to look at the time or anything. We're just going to make believe it's like around here. Say you got in even, look, let's say you got in even right here, right? And this is a zero DTE or it's a Thursday or something like that. This is called choppiness. This is going to rob you, right? The reason I say that is because you may go up, like say you got in at the bottom of this wick right here and the contracts were at point. Uh, they were at $10 a contract. And when you're just when you're just riding it, I'm just making believe because this is not going to happen with Bank of America. You need a bigger move. But let's just say that the contracts from down here to up here at the top of this uh, doji jumped up from $10 to $20. You can go ahead and take profits. But as soon as it starts that choppiness right here, you're going to lose mm -hmm. all the profit. All of yeah. the crazy part about it. And it's because you're getting closer to expiration now if this was a monday and you was doing it on a weekly contract it will not the theta will not rob you like that right it'll just move slower right where you just what you got to understand is if we enter in at let's say this number right here 36 31 this was our entry point if we enter in here in the stock in about an hour say it goes up to 37 12 and then in that same uh, in, the, in the next hour it comes back to 36 31 you're not breaking even my boy you're you're losing you're negative five you're negative seven you're losing and it's because it doesn't matter that that was your entry point theta is working against you whenever you jump into these contracts you have to continue you you have to continue in your favor if you went for call it has to continue in, in that call. Oh, that's good right there. Yeah, I like that. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Awesome. I like that. Thank you, man. Absolutely. That's what we're here for. Hey Modi, I got you in the um in the chat, but I just wanted to ask you real quick when you swing it, when you swing in plays, um, how do you determine whether to just go ahead and get out of it on a day trade? Um, or to swing it. And then if you swing it, um, how do you determine? Uh, your, your stop loss. Um, right, let me try to remember these questions. All right. So how do I determine my stop loss? My stop loss is going to be the bottom of wicks, right? So it just it just depends on what time frame I jumped in. And I know I say I use the five to 15 to three minute, but I use the one minute too. Um, I just don't like talking about that because I don't, 
it's dangerous, man. If you don't know how to just see like that, this is a support right here. Look, I just do it real quick. That's a support. This is a support. If you can't tell that real quickly and this is rejection, you're going to lose a lot of money because you, you don't know how to trade the range. Right. And these are ranges where just like this is a range. Look, I'll do the dollar dotted line right here. I'm going to answer your question though, but these are ranges, right? So you want to, you got to learn how to, Yeah, man. Moody, I think we lost you again, bro. Let me know if you can hear me. Y'all give me one second. Let me try to get in touch with Moody. All right, guys, I'm back. I'm about to just turn off my Wi-Fi. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah, we got The last I, thing I just, you said was we got to learn how, and then it went off. Um, all right, cool. Uh, I don't, what you said, the last thing you heard was what? You got to learn, and then, <laughs> yeah, you were, that's it. I can't remember. You were, um, learning to read the candlesticks. Yeah, you was you was drawing different uh, supports and resistances, different price channels, <laughs> price channels. Oh, all right, cool, cool. We need to understand. All right, cool. So what I was saying, basically, I, I brought it all the way to Oxy. Um, I was I was going on a tangent. Um, I wasn't answering your question, my bad. But uh, basically, you're just telling you, like, I enter in in the five or the 15 minute. And the reason I started going on a tangent is because I used the bottom of my wicks, right? Um, depending on where I enter in at as my stop loss, right? But I was explaining that sometimes I enter in on a one minute as well, but I don't teach those kind of things. When you see me drawing drawing the little uh, uh, supports and resistance with the alerts, it was basically me letting you know, like say if I take it back over to this one minute, it's like, you have to understand Bank of America was doing it better, like levels, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is a level from right here. I'm not on my computer, so it just takes me forever. These are levels, right, that the stock is going to play at. So, and I'm going to just talk about the cents, like 20 cents. We understand that right here at the bottom at 70, $70, that's, there's a support right here. So at, at 20 cents, once we break it, we've been flirting with it. Once we break it, we break to break resistance. Once we break so many resistance, we break, we break it down. Right. It went all the way up to bring it back down to the same support. It's just not going to go back to the first support. You see the first resistance it broke right here. It came right back to it. Once it comes back down to it and they say like, OK, cool, we we agree with this price. Boom. Supply and demand again. It breaks above again. Don't you see how it keeps coming back to that support? And they try to see like, are we going to 
are we going to keep it up here, right? Boom, let's go ahead and take it back up. No, it didn't happen. Why? Because it started getting weaker and weaker. They don't keep bouncing. They're not bouncing. And every time they bounce, they're not bouncing higher, right? They're bouncing lower. So boom, breaks all the way back down. And guess what? Look at all of this accumulation right here. We're going to remember this level just like this level, right? And when it broke down, it gave you accumulation right here. Look how it just, oh, we broke down. Oh, we're going to fake you up. Psych, bye, boom, and broke straight down. And look at all this accumulation before it drops right back down. If we bring it over here, let's bring it smaller. Look at all the accumulation right there, right? The chart literally mirrors itself. But that's all I was trying to say. But to answer your question, um, my stop loss, and I was bringing it over to Oxy to just be able, and y'all just seen, I just drew all this other stuff. So don't, let me just delete it. I'll redo all this. Oh my God, I don't even remember which ones I did, which ones I didn't. All right, so long story short. So on Oxy, right? There's my stop loss, 68,909. And as you see, like I always say, I'm gonna have my stop loss lower than those wicks because I know that they can come down, take out those targets and come right back up. The reason I haven't left Oxy is because I did move my trend line. Um, yes, uh, yeah, it was yesterday when um, we broke the trend, right? We had broke the trend on this red candle and it started pushing right back up the next hour. And I was like, oh man, I got faked out. Um, but it is what it is, right? But long story short, it's still in its trend. What is going on is fighting this head and shoulder pattern, right? This is shoulder, head, shoulder. This is the four hour time frame. So each candlestick is only gonna be two hours of the market. We're gonna get a pre-market and an after aftermarket and a pre-market candle. Then we're just gonna get two candlesticks, right? So I have the understanding that this may play out a little longer, right? So I got in a little late. And I'm going to just be honest with y'all. I'm emotionally attached to the trade, <laughs> right? Because a lot of people probably won't say that. Like, right now, I know I'm emotionally attached to the trade. I would have been oxy. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be holding no trade. That's 50%. That, I don't care how much time I have on it, right? And it's not a leap, you know what I'm saying? Or a, a long, long swing. So I want to get out, but you know, your boy woke up late. I got a lot of things going on right now and um, I'm, I'm gonna have a really big week next week. So it's like, uh, I woke up late. I seen we were still good. I put my phone down. I went to go do something. Then I came back. I'm like 30% down. I'm like, oh, you know what? We're just gonna turn you to a lotto. You're not about to be playing with my emotions like that. Um, we either gonna win or we gonna lose. But that's why I was telling you guys to uh, exercise risk management because I could lose this trade, right? And it's not going to hurt me, but I don't want to play with you guys' money, but I still believe in this trade. Why? Because I correlate stocks, right? I'm correlating this with XLE. Like, everybody knows I like energy. And we, we you know what I'm saying? We moving nice. We moving nice. It's just a little, you know what I'm saying? A little consolidation, man. And we just need to break out of it. But um, my bad, bro. To answer your question, how I'm gonna like say my can't. It just depends on the on the time frame that you're entering and your trading style. Me, I'm a strat trader, so I'm always going to have my my entry is always gonna give me my stop loss. Like if I'm going for calls, my entry is the top of this candle. The break, the next candle that comes, the top of that candle, right? That inside bar. My stop loss is going to be the bottom of that candle. So all I do is look at the high and the low of the candles. My stop loss is automatically 8747. You feel me? Um, and what was, your, yeah, what was your second question? Uh, your first question to that? You wanted to know how do I determine my stop loss? That's going to be the of my my candle wicks, or it's going to be a support level. That's the another best thing that I can say. Like I will use right here as my stop loss. Or I'll bring it down to the bottom of this wick right here. Because I also, look, I'll bring this. Dang, this is, oh, I'm on XLD. It's all right. I'll fix it. Like right here, right? Um, Because I also know that this is a support level, right? All my candles don't need to be touching, but I also see when we broke out of here. Look how it was indecision, then broke out. Boom, boom. 
and then bounced off of that and kept going, right? So that can also determine your stop loss as well. Like, oh, it broke your trend line or it broke your, um, your resistance line and things of that nature. But what was your first question? Basically, I was, uh, it, it was basically the same question. Like, how would you determine whether you want to get out of a day trade or swing it to the next day? Oh, okay. So if it, um, so let's say, let me take it over to the daily candle. If I was going for calls, ooh, snap, stop playing. Do you see this? Red to green. <laughs> Let me stop. Um, but uh, long story short, uh, like say if I entered in and I wouldn't do that on this inside bar right here and it failed and went red, if this candle went too down, I'll end up, I'll, I wouldn't swing it because they just told me the direction is to go down. It's just like if you look at Oxy, I see just trying to fake people out, bro. Look at this. <laughs> look at this. Look at this crap she doing. Oh, my bad. I'm trying to get y'all to see the, these strat numbers. All right, boom. Two down. I was thinking yesterday we was going to stay inside. You know what I'm saying? We broke down, but we started recovering, so I didn't care. So I was like, all right, we straight. No. Today, Today we did the same thing where, well, we didn't do the same thing, but we stood inside and we almost broke down to the downside. But this is also a bullish reversal pattern, or it can be a continuation. It could be a two, one, two red going down, right down to the trend line, right? Because that's where it's going to want to bounce from or break a little bit. So I made the decision to like, no, I'm going to stay. Why? Because if I look at my 10 day candle, it's just an inverted pin bar, just losing a little bit of uh, momentum, right? But we, the direction is still too up. I got six days left. If I bring it over to my week, my direction is up. Yeah, I'm failing right now, but I'm not failing to the, to the point that this is at the 50% retracement, right? If I pull out the handy dandy fib, look, look at that wick, how it came all the way close to that 50% and wick back up, right? So I'm not I'm not uh, totally convinced that we're gonna go down. You could come right here and when it did it right here, look, boom. You see how it came down to the 50% retracement and still recovered. And then the next week, what? No, thank you. Man, how much was that? The next week, $7.60 off of Oxy on a small account builder. That is a bad, you know what I'm saying? Right, depending on how many contracts you got. So that's what's showing me. And then look, this is the fake out. You go to the mall, you son of a gun. Let me delete all this. Well, I'll do it on the other side. You see, we're inside. We just have we haven't broke out for the month. But look at look, look at the RSI. We trying to go back over so look what happened here on it on this month. Right? We went to up and back down. This is just called a pool pack. And we go right back up, right? This is why I love my my, my bigger time frame. For the three months, we two up. Now let's go look at the chart though. We're fighting a resistance. As soon as we over that, like we're closed, where we keep closing under that resistance. As soon as we're over, it is a wrap. We're taking this thing all the way to 82 bucks. That's the that, you see it. Those are my magnitudes. I want all those targets. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, and then we just broke over the RSI as well. So like, let's go ahead and take it back to the daily. I just explained all of that, right? So let me delete all this so it doesn't confuse you. We're over here trying to join the band and stuff, playing the trombone and shit. Um, so if I take you over to the daily, now you can see the pullback. You see all these red candles? The, the pullback, look at the monthly. You can see the pullback. Look at the weekly. You can see the pullback. It's just one candle. We take it to the daily. You can see all three of those. Okay, we could, we could deal with that pullback. I still think we're going to go back bullish. That's just me, though. You know what I mean? But anything can happen. Look at this. I'm taking it down to the hour now. You see that head and shoulder, shoulder, head, 
shoulder right here and it's still playing off of that shoulder since it already broke and came down to his neckline his neckline was kind of like right here where i got the cursor at it broke down came down here now it's ranging boom boom what this is doing right here right here is this uh, let's go to discord um, Come on, man. It's up here somewhere. See, I gotta, I gotta utilize this tab. Look at this. Wow, it's right here, right here. Wow, oh, that's what it's doing. Now let's take it back to the charts. You see it clearly. It is ranging. So one thing that I would say too, until you're like. Until you can tell your confidence and you're like, bro, I'm nasty at this, bro. I keep killing it. Stop going for breakouts. When you see something at resistance, this is what helped me trade. When you see something at resistance, stop thinking for calls to break out. Go for puts. When something's at resistance, you, you that's the logical mindset. We go for puts. When something comes to support, we go for calls. The thing is, once you start learning about these candles and you start seeing the potential of the market, you see it at a, at a support right here, and you're like, nah, I want to break it, I want to break it. We break it because you know it's going to go down to another support. You know what I'm saying? You want to go for that breakout, and then, oh, man, it broke out a little bit. I got 3%, but I didn't take my profit. Now it came back into its range. Don't let the market do that to you. It would do it to you all day, like right here. Oh, we broke out. You see right here, the, the uh, or you could take it from right here. Let me just delete this. I don't want to delete that one. I'm gonna just draw a line so you can see. This was a support level. And I'm and right now I'm doing something that I normally don't do. I'm using the wicks, right? Dang, Moody. I'm using the wicks, like how I started off of that wick and that wick. That's what I did. And I used this wick right here. As soon as it broke that support. Boom, from right here of 6905 took you all the way down to 6809. A lot of people didn't take their profit, came right back into your range. Did it again for you. Came back right into your range. Did it again, but didn't go back down to that support level. That is very important to know when something is starting to give you higher lows, right? One bottom, two bottom three bottom it's just not at the same level triple bottom pattern somebody also called that out right if you're also seeing a triple bottom pattern there's a head and shoulders in there somewhere it's probably on a different um time frame right but this head and shoulders that i'm showing you showing you is the head and shoulders that's playing off our time frame but you can see it play off of the hour time frame once you start like understanding the different multiple time frame analysis, you can take it to 30 minute and I'm more than positive I'm gonna see it there too. You see, shoulder, head, shoulder, neckline breaks, comes down, you see the range again. So anytime you see something ranging and you could go to the past data and you see, oh, we're not breaking this high at 7140. We're not breaking this low at 6808. Stop going for the freaking breakout preview. Trust me, stop going for the breakouts to go down there. Look at all this money you're leaving, 68, 71. And my scary eyes don't like the average in still. You know what I'm saying? But that's just me. But, you know what I mean? We could have grabbed it any time it came down to 68 bucks and took it back to 70 or close to almost 71 bucks. But I chose not to, right? But I'm also not watching the charts. But um, does anybody else have any questions? Um, can you explain like the average in, average up, average, um, yeah, and all those, um, like that terminology? Uh, yeah, if you help me explain it. <laughs> uh, what, and what, now, uh, what, like I, you know, I, I always be as saying I got to average in, I got to average down, I got to. Gotcha. Average, so, average down means when you're averaging in, it means like, 
uh, say you jumped in a contract, right? And the contract is at $20 a contract, 0.20. And you're losing on a contract and it's going down, but you also see a ranging like right here and you believe that it's going to go right back up. When it's going, they say you got in right here and it was at $20 a contract and now it's at $10 a contract, you'll want to average in right here to change your average of your contract being at $20. Now your, your average is change from being 20 and it's at point 10, it might change to $15, right? It just all depends too how much more capital you're putting into it, right? Just because it's dollars a contract now, oh, my new average is going to be $10. No. You have to put more uh, liquidity into it. So when we're talking about averaging down, I mean, averaging in, that means that someone is losing on their trade and they have they believe that the trade is still going to work in their favor and go up so they're going to buy it at a discount they're going to buy it lower than they bought it at so if you bought it at 10 uh 20 now you're buying it at 10 dollars, and you possibly get an average of 15 bucks or 14 bucks now you're not down as much right you're you're closer to being back green but what you have to understand is you actually are still down because you just put more money into it that money is just not losing any money just now, right? So always keep that in mind. Um, averaging up means you believe that the trade is still going good. Like say I bought some contracts at this morning. Let me bring it up bigger. I bought some contracts at this morning star, right? At the break of the morning star, I believe that it's gonna continue up. I bought me 20 contracts, started a starter position, took it up here, boom, got to a resistance. Um, I'm seeing that the candles are still moving pretty nicely. And I say, you know what? I think we're gonna keep moving up. I'm gonna go ahead and buy me 40 contracts. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever the case may be, don't, don't do that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, say I'm gonna buy me three more extra contracts, right? That's called um, averaging up. That's called adding to your position. Basically, um, you're still in the position you're up in your position, you're not down, but you want to buy some more and make some more profits. So you add more to the same contract or the strike price above it, and it keeps moving up and you're making more money. So that's averaging up on winning trades because they're winning. And that's the only reason I only average, I only add up and I'm a strat trader. So I, they don't really teach us to average down. Okay, thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You, you sure? Yeah, you're already in a position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. All right, cool. We're just making sure because you said yeah twice. Hey, yeah, I have a question. What's up? Um, yeah, you say um when you take profits on the contracts that you have, is that day trading once you sell them? The few that you're taking profits on. Yeah. So if you bought the contracts today, if you bought the contracts today and you sell them today, that is going to be considered a day trade. Now, let's say um, if you on Robinhood and you only can do three day trades out of the week, if you buy 10 contracts today and you sell five contracts today, that is gonna con that's gonna be considered one day trade. You still have five contracts. Let's say you're done with that position, you wanna just take your profits and you sell the last five contracts, that's gonna be considered two day trades. It doesn't matter how many contracts you sell at the time, what matters is how many times you do it per day. Oh, okay, appreciate that. Absolutely, but if you buy it today and you sell it tomorrow, it is now a swing trade. They can't they consider it as a day trade. Anything that you buy today and sell tomorrow is a swing trade. Anything that you buy today and sell today, it is a day trade. Anything that you buy within the first, anything that you buy right now and sell within the first fifteen minutes, that is a scalp. Scalpers. Gotcha. No trades no longer. They'll they'll stay in a trade from two minutes to 15 minutes, mostly the max. If it's 30 minutes, they stressed out. <laughs> I got you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And um definitely come down to the weeklies, uh, the weekly slash quiz um tab right here. Uh black girl stocks is who I was talking about. You could definitely uh check out the Greece. This is where I learned it from. Uh, I didn't check out any other videos after I learned it from her and I just continue to do my own due diligence and things of that nature. Um, for people asking about stop losses and things of that nature, 
you can look at the strat combo sheet and the strat combo sheet will always tell you what entry point and your stop loss. And it will always show you that if you're going for calls, it's going to be the top of the candles and your stop loss is going to be the bottom of that candle that you're entering in. Um, that you're on, on a previous candle, right? Not the live candle. The live candle is the candle that you're entering in. Hey, D'Angelo, I know you on here. Am I missing something, bro? Because I know I got like a lot of things on uh, on my mind right now. No, I think you covered the majority. I'm I'm answering questions that I'm getting oh. DMs in the chat from. So, <laughs> but uh, oh. I think you I think you covered a good majority of everything, bro. To be honest, unless somebody else has like some detailed questions. Yeah, my bad, bro. I I left the chat. I appreciate you, bro. <laughs> Thank you. No, so I'm much. getting direct messages, so it's all oh, good. Like, like you oh. can't see them, so it's all good. All right, all right. So let's see. So if you take profits on contracts, is that day trade? Yes, we just answered that. We will just updated their system where you can do paper option trading. Whoever just said that, uh, Sam, I am. Thank you for saying that. Put everybody on. That's what I forgot to put people on. Boom. So how I trade because um say like and I really use this for my small accounts. I still do it for my big accounts as well. I'm not gonna sit here and cap, but I normally do this for my small accounts, right? So oh snap, you're gonna see the trades I actually trade throughout these weeks. <laughs> so I put everything that I'm about to get into on my Robin Hood watch list. Like if I want to get into Bank of America, right? Before I go buy my contracts, I'll be like, okay, I'm looking at the candlesticks. I like the grease. I like everything. We're going to buy this one. Boom. I'm going to put it on there and I'm already seeing, okay, we're not moving. I can still get my bid. I'm going to go straight to my, oh, no, don't do that. Uh, I'm going to go straight to my TD Ameritrade account and um, I'm going to go buy my contracts, right? And what I do is I look at these, right? Because it also helps me take profits on my small accounts. On my bigger account, the dollar amount is just going to help me take my profit every single time. I ain't going to cap. But I could click on it. Oh, I just did this one. Uh, like, oh, I didn't tell nobody I was an hour. <laughs> uh, yo, uh, Avery, shout out to you. But um, say like, like Google or something, right? You can put it on your watch list and you can see how it moves throughout the day, right? You can see the profits that you could potentially make. This is how you paper trade options. You do not paper trade options um, on Webull or TOS where you're buying shares. That is not the same thing. When you come trade options, you're going to get robbed and you're going to be mad and you're going to be like, man, why am I losing? Why am I doing this? Or why people do paper trading and then you come do options and they be like, man, why am I losing this? Why am I losing that? Well, hey, Moody was not trying to be a hater. I was just trying to let you know that this right here, the Greeks is not in paper trading. It is not buying shares. So that's why you're losing money because you never learned about that and you don't understand that part of the metrics, right? So um, that's what I would say. Utilize your Robinhood watch list. What the Robinhood watch list does for me, it made my trigger finger quicker, right? I can jump into these trades much more quicker because I'm like, okay, boom. Mentally, when I put it on the watch list, I already feel like I jumped in the trade. You know what I'm saying? So I go and I just jump in my trade and I just watch these contracts. The reason I watch it on Robinhood is because it's only telling me that I have one contract, right? Now, if I was, if I was looking uh, at my account, right, and I bought 50 contracts and um, let's just say I'm down $1, I'm going to be down $50, right? And Moody, honest. I'm gonna be honest with you. That shit scared me, bro. That shit was my mind. Give me my money back. Y'all wanna see my face? <laughs> nah, let me stop. But nah, that shit's like, I don't know. And I mean, I don't care that I've been in this market for a year or whatever the case may be. That shit is scary. Who wants to lose their money, right? So this also helps me not jump out of my trades. Cause when I started buying a lot of contracts, and I started seeing that, like, whoa, I just bought 100 contracts. This is down a dollar. I'm down $100. Like, what is going on right now? This is not cool, <laughs> right? And then, oh, $2. I'm down 200 What is going on right now? You know what I'm saying? So this also, uh, what you would call it, uh, helped me. And I, I honestly thought Robin Hood was looking out for me because everybody that I was putting on to this for like two months straight, 
they didn't have it. I, I was the only person with the Robin Hood watches, but I do remember signing up for it. And I was like trying to help people even when I was doing one-on-ones or chart classes or live trading with people, I would try to get them to start utilizing this because I started seeing how it was helping me. And also it helps me learn how much money I'm leaving on the table, right? Like what's my boy name? Leave, leave with the bag, shout you, I shout you out my boy, look at this. I've been out, but imagine we would have held these contracts. Look at when I, I that's when I bought, that's the actual price that I bought it at $263. Well, I could have probably bought it a little higher. No, I think that was my, nope, that wasn't. Um, but long story short, look at the profits off of it right now, $827, right? The profits alone from 61%. And this is something to keep in mind as well. This, this stock, this is Tesla though, at 61%, at 61%, I'm going to say it again, at 61%, should I say it again? Yeah. At 61%, you're making $417. Okay, anybody else have any questions? That's how you start choosing your trades and you know, oh, do I have a big account? Well, hey, I can trade Tesla. You know what I'm saying? Because the percentage amounts are gonna be so much bigger. What am I trying to do? Oh, the chat. You got somebody with the hand up, R. Oh, man, unmute yourself, R. Oh, you are unmuted. What's up, R? Hey, R, you got your hand um, raised. Do I got to, let me see, put in a waiting room? What do I got to do? I can lower your hand. You want me to lower your hand? Well, she just unmuted her. She just, un she just muted herself. So I don't think she want to say anything. Or he. Um, let me go back up here. Uh, do, 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 do. Thanks. Uh, if I knew that. I was trying to figure out the last voice before Moody's voice right now. Uh, could have been D'Angelo. The only con is that you can't view the charts at the same time. You might want to invest in the trading views to see charts back and forth. Oh, you definitely probably helping somebody. Uh, yeah, when setting a stop loss on Weeple is it's set by contract price or stock price, or when you set your stop loss by wick, how do you enter that? Whoa, that was a crazy question. Um, on Weeble, uh, it's, I believe is a stop or a limit, a limit stop. Uh, you're only, you're not going by the wicks or the stock price or anything. You're going by the contract price itself, right? So if you got in at point 20 and you want to stop loss, because you don't want to lose too much money of uh, maybe 0.15 that's what you enter um yes taking profit on the option oh that's the end of do, 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 do. appreciate it. does anybody else have any more questions when you day trade yeah you... i got a question bro what all right what I'm reading this one when you day trade do you use the day chart and one minute, five minute, 15 minute, or a different time frame. Yes, lows, I use a day chart, normally go from the weekly down to the daily to the four hour. Um, the small time frame that I like is the one minute, my baby, three minute, five minute, and 15 minute. But I use multiple time frame analysis. I don't stay on just one, one time frame. Uh, D Wiz has a uh, oh, appreciate y'all. Can yeah. you? Hey, hey, Moody. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What's your question, bro? <laughs> hey, I you got a good question. Oh, never mind. I'll wait. Nah, what's your question, bro? Moody. Oh, okay, yeah. Hey, so what you just said with the uh stop loss limit, as for just as you stay, like you know, what I'm saying the price you bought, you bought it was 15, but you put a stop loss for um, you know, whatever. How do you go about um, seeing that like on Webull and in the moments or just like if you was on another chart, just being able to know where you had to even put in that that stop loss? I mean, I have an idea, but just being able to see it on the chart and knowing when it, you know, what does it look like in visual wise, if I that makes sense. This is Los, right? Nah, semi. -in. Oh, semi. I'm sorry, bro. Y'all sound alike. I'll be trying to remember that. <laughs> But uh, um, uh, Sam, I am. Quick question before I even try to answer that. Have you ever looked it up on YouTube? You know what? I probably, mm -hmm. I probably had to look into that. 
Wow. I'm just trying to help you, bro. That's how you research. Well, I mean, and and and, and with you be making that statement, with you making that statement, do you have somebody that you can, you know, kind of throw out there where I can, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but yes, so look, check it out. You looking at my screen? It's probably in one of these tabs. Like, let me see. She be tagging somebody. Where is it at? Probably options education. Let's go to options education. Ooh, how to set a stop loss on Google. Right here. You see it? Yeah, I see. I see. I see, I see. Okay, okay. we'll do, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's going to be in options, education, under the education tab. You're just going to scroll up, not too far, passing the Greeks, what we talk about all the time. Um, you can see that uh, Jordan posted it on his Instagram and also posted it here so people could be uh, very mindful of what uh, the Greeks mean and what they are. He also has one, how to set a stop loss on TOS, Weeble, and Robinhood, right? So definitely check those out. And now that I'm on this topic of education, I definitely, hey, if anybody, can you please, um, I mean, can you please mute yourself? Thank you. Uh, just want to shout out. To you. Um, I'm just now aware because I know that the group has gotten locked down and y'all can't, uh, people that are not paying can't see certain things. Shout out to the GOAT Jordan because I just found out that all these classes are still available for everybody that's free, right? Um, he was going to lock it because our people investing into themselves and um, also into uh, the business. And I just think it's very beautiful to see someone like not lock the education tab, just like how you needed to figure that out or how to get approved on Weeble, you still have access to all of this, right? You don't just have access to welcome here. You also have access to the education tab, right? So make sure that you guys are going in to the weekly homeworks and, you know, asking those questions. I know you guys can't type in the chat if you're free, but hey, you know, uh, I don't know how much a weekly uh, cost, but I'm saying we uh, you spending that at McDonald's, you spending that at Burger King, you know, and you're not making that right back. So always think of that. Like, don't look at it as a bill. Look at it as look at it as a, a information pool where you can get um, an infinite amount of of knowledge. Right. So make sure you guys uh, definitely tap in um, to all the educational tabs. Remember, guys, I'm always going to be a little hard on y'all, but that's just uh, um, I don't mean it in, in no malice. And I also oh, don't mean me? with bad intentions. Yeah. But please oh, make okay. sure I'm going I'm to I'm listen to you right now, bro. Please make sure that. It's great to ask questions and always ask questions. But when you do ask a question, ask yourself, hey, did I try to research that? Hey, did I go to Google and type that in? Hey. That I go to YouTube and try to find a video. You know what I'm saying? The reason I say that, because majority of any moderators that you see or admins or analysts and educators, I promise you, they ask questions, but they also went and did their own due diligence. And that's when you start getting that confidence. Um, but yeah, my bad, dude. You was trying to ask me a question. And I know you said Moody a couple of times. I think it was you. Yeah, no, you know what? It, um, I'm R, but for some apparent reason, I was talking and Worth to hearing me. Um, I have two questions if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, first question. Okay, so let's just say you're going uh, with the charts, and let's. I'm throwing out a random number. Let's just throw up sixty-eight dollars on Oxy. Now you're going to the options, and you're do, you're placing an option. So let's just say sixty-eight. Let's just say sixty-eight fifty on the chart is going to profit target. How can you determine that price on the options price? Because it's different. So let's say 68.50 on the option price can be $2. I mean, you know, 68.50 on a, on a chart and oxy could be like, just let's just say $2 on, you know, $2 or 150 on the option. You know what I'm, do you understand what I'm saying? So how would you take your profit on that? Or am I, did I just answer my own question? My apologies. I couldn't hear you. Um, my apologies. Somebody just 
somebody just turned on one of my cars and my phone connected to one of my cars and I just noticed that. Can y'all hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> All right, my, my bad. Man, my, my man said one of his cars. I ain't gonna say oh. nothing though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll peep that, but I ain't say nothing. All right. <laughs> Damn, Did you hear sorry. anything? No, I didn't hear anything. All right, Damn. all right. So let's I'm gonna I'll do it quicker. So let's just like I said, we're in the we're in the charts. Let's go to Oxy chart. So I'm gonna just throw a random number. Let's just say sixty-eight dollars. I'm looking at a chart. So then I get into the option. So let's just say sixty-eight fifty. I want to take a profit, but the sixty-eight fifty in the chart is not the same as the option price. So how would you how would you take your profit on the options price? Okay, say that one more time. So we seen Oxy at 60 bucks, right? We're just gonna right. believe it. And Oxy is going to 68 bucks. Right. But we go into Oxy. I'm not, you're not telling me what strike price we in, but you're well, I was just I was just throwing out a random number. I was just just going just throwing numbers out at the top of my head. Okay. Say the right. last part. So how how would you determine the the options price compared to the stock price itself? Uh, I really don't compare. You talking about the premium of the of the contract? Correct. It was like it's just, so. Let's just say you wanted to take profit at sixty eight fifty on the on the um chart itself, the stock itself. But yeah. now you're you're now you're in options. So where would you know sixty eight fifty is in your options chart? Yeah. See, I'm not you. You're already making me think too much, and I, I'm not even going to think that far. I'm going to go to my candlesticks. My okay. candle. Yeah. You feel me? Like. I, like once I started thinking about it, I'm like, oh, well, that's a way I can figure that out. You know, I do watch the contracts and I see how they move. But mm -hmm. the logical answer would be the candlesticks, right? Regardless of the fact if I don't know what options we're in, let's just say we're in a $60 call. If I want to know when to take profits, it's going to be like, let's just say it was right here, right? And we're moving strong. My first take profit area is the top of this wick right here. This is my first take profit. That's my second take profit. That's my third take profit. The top okay. of the. Okay, so it doesn't matter where, what price, it, how much you're making on the options. Uh, what do you mean by that? Um, I think I I think you just answered my question. I think I'm just over analyzing it right now. Yeah, so. bro, you are. Yeah, I, I think. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I mean, second, all right. So second question, do you, do you look at a uh, volatility percentage? Like what's, what volatility range do you like? No, nah, I don't look at none of that, bro. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Uh, thanks. Look at, you're welcome. I literally look at the candlesticks. Um, I also look at volume whenever I do turn it on, I have it off right now. Right. But I also do look at volume, but I also do understand that volume normally spark, spikes up in the beginning and at the end of the day. Gotcha. When you have like most of the volatility, you start dying off like in the middle of the, the trading day. And the reason why is because of lunch hour and people like, you know, they didn't take their profits and things of that nature. Gotcha. Appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Absolutely. But um, one thing I would say is um when it comes to taking profits use your candlesticks the charts will always let you know where to take some profits at always like you see how i said it here at this green bar i mean not green bar but that green line green line green line let's look at past data oops if you look at this past data that's your first green line right there boom you see how you got nothing but green candles breaking through that yep look at the second one nothing but green candles but also look at this green candle that comes down and stops it's called looking at price action you see how it stopped look at the cursor uh the horizontal way that is on literally right here on the green one look how it stops right there at the bottom of this green one but you also see it pushing back up right so you know that there's going to be a stop there and if you look at that one you can come over here and see it at that inside bar right here you can see it on that pin bar right there yeah yeah you know what i'm saying so you know that there's going to be some traffic i like to call it turbulence right there right but if we go to the next green green one look at that boom take profit look at all that indecision up there and then you see all the rejection up here the past data tells you everything gotcha. you know what i'm saying yeah, and then I appreciate a that. breakup 
Absolutely, bro. I'm just trying to find another way to like try to break it down and make it stick because I know what it is when you start overanalyzing yourself. That just means that you're really trying to get it and you're really trying to understand it. But now you're uh, w- what I understood was and D'Angelo will always tell me this. Don't overanalyze things. If you're looking at a pattern and you want to see a head and shoulders, if you don't see it clearly, it is not there. If you want, if you're talking about, man, hold on, if you got to squint your eye and you're like, is this an inverted cup in hand? What is this? It's not there. Your mind is now trying to make it appear, right? Trading is very, very simple. We just make it very, very hard because our emotions, we're not like, it doesn't matter how old we are, bro. I'll be talking to 50 year old people that don't even know their emotions yet. They don't know that, bro, you're not even happy right now. You're excited, dude. That's the difference. Gotcha. Thanks a lot, man. <laughs> yeah, ain't no problem, bro. Yo, I got a question. What up? What up? What up? What up? Uh, so look, that's my problem, bro. When I'm when I'm like, say we scalping, right? I'm not looking at the Greeks. So I have like an idea of saying, like, it depends on what, what stock I'm trading, like that Tesla trade. That was like one contract where you made like 400, right? Mm-hmm. Was that was that one? So that was one contract. So let's say I'm like, all right, I'm taking I'm trading I Tesla got, on one. I'm, I got I uh, just don't I don't lie to people, bro. I got I only took like 30% off that. No, nah, but but I'm just saying, like, because because this is my 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 problem that I that I think I'm facing. I'm not buying enough contracts. Mm-hmm. to to reach like my price target so like if i want to make like a thousand dollars on a, like this tesla trade right mm-hmm. how many contracts if i'm not looking at the greeks because i'm thinking that all right i'm gonna be in this trade for probably maybe 20 minutes maybe 10 minutes you know depending on how because tesla moves real quick so um but i what i'm hearing you say is that you're stuck in a bad habit and you don't want to get out of that bad habit you want me I to think help my, you want no, me to it, stay in the, <laughs> no the reason i'm saying that bro is because you're saying you're not looking at your greeks if anybody listens to me and how i trade i look at candlesticks and i look at my greeks candlesticks tell me where we're going and then the, the greeks is going to help determine how many like my 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 risk management is gonna let me know how much money I'm able to lose, how much money I'm a, I'm able to gain, right? But it also helps me determine too how many contracts I will buy, not not the Greeks, but my portfolio, right? So when you're asking how many contracts should I buy, I'm just like, no, Dennis, hold on, we got to go to back to basic one, candlesticks. You want to buy options now? Look at your Greeks. You don't ever. When you go grocery shopping, you don't ever just pick up an item and not look at the price, do you? Well, it depends. All right. All right. I'm going to be real with right. no, 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 no. I mean, you. Know, I, know how to, I, mean, I know how to work with mindset, bro. All right. So yeah. if we walk into the Gucci store, you're, you're not going to look at the price of them, um, them sneakers? No, nah, because we're in the Gucci store. So in my mind, I'm already knowing what to pay. Okay. I mean, that's just so, me. Some, some, right. some places so, you got. No, 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 no. Bro, I mean, bro, we're just gonna elevate. We're just gonna elevate. Yeah. But take you into the Ferrari store. You're not gonna look nah, at the price of the Ferrari. Because nah. you're not. If you at the Ferrari, bro, you know we not asking what the price right. is. Help so, you, bro. I mean, think I can help him, bro. I think <laughs> I can help him. Look, look, bro. A millionaire, a multi-billionaire is always gonna look at the price or something. A broke mindset mm-hmm. will not because he wants to impress someone else. If I walk into the Gucci store and then me being the person that I am, I'm still going to look at that price. That's not going to make me feel lesser. What makes me feel lesser when I walk into one of these places is when I'm broke and I know that I don't belong because I can't buy none of this stuff. When I know that I do belong, bro, I don't care. I'm going to look at all of these prices. But that, so I was I mean, trying to... But go I'm ahead. Looking at my Greeks when I'm, but, but I'm looking at my Greeks when I'm swinging, but I guess in my mind, because I'm scalping, I'm thinking I'm not going to stay in a contract long enough for the Greeks to affect me long term, like time decay. Ada, um, affect you. Look, look at my screen. Forty three dollars and seventy cents. You think that that's not going to affect you if the stock moves five dollars the wrong way on Tesla? That's going to affect your contract, bro. That's going to. Let me ask for that, Moody. 
Let me add uh, to that, bro. Like he he mentioned when he he began, and he said he don't know if he's buying enough contract. I think that is your answer. For one, you already know like what it is. You're not buying enough contracts to meet that point in which you're trying to reach your price target. What or the value you're trying to get from that trade. But ultimately, you know what I'm saying? You have to identify not only um, how many contracts you want to get, you have to identify where you see this trade going, like how far it's going to go and reach the particular price target. Like if you already have that in your mind frame and which how, how you want to trade, then 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 you already kind of compute everything together and you understand I need to have this many contracts if I'm trying to get a thousand dollars for this to move two dollars up because I'm expecting a two dollar move. You see what I'm saying? So you have to factor all those things. There's many factors, but you have to factor those things in when considering each trade. But I think you already have those answers. You just kind of need that verification or you know what I'm saying, all that confirmation. Like I know I'm doing was right it's just maybe i just need a little bit you know push or nudge to confirm what i'm already thinking yeah i mean it's uh yeah it, it, you're right i mean it does make sense i guess a part of me is thinking like all right you know risk management but a, another part of me is thinking like um but like it also far- goes back to it, it goes back bro to simply the candlesticks are going to tell you what you need to do. You know what I'm saying? So you right. have to like have firm confirmation in which what you expect the candles to do. You know what I'm saying? So if you expecting the $2 move and it doesn't get there, you may need to, you know, cut your losses, cut your win right there. You know what I'm saying? If you're in profit and then, you know, find another trade, but don't, hold on to a trade just because you didn't reach a thousand dollars that day. That's bad trading. That's bad prepared preparation. You know what I'm saying? So just consider that first. Like you have to understand what you expect the con- the candles to do. If you're in a high probable setup, then right. you get the move to make your entry, like be calculated. And then you know it doesn't saying? go your way right then and yeah. there. Then don't even try to wait it out. Just, yeah, just exit nah, right then and there. Cut, cut, the cut your losses the early. Cut your losses early. Hey, why would you, hey, Dennis, why would you cut your loss? If it doesn't go your way, why would you cut your losses early? Well, I mean, it depends on how many contracts I got. If I'm in, if I'm no, like. No, 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 no. It depends on what you're doing. It depends doing. on the candlesticks. It it, not yeah. even, it depends on what you're doing. You keep talking about scalping. So if it goes the opposite way on you, that's an automatic right. Right, because you're scalping and you're playing a weekly contract or you're playing zero DTE. Those contracts right. will kill your your portfolio. You know what I'm saying when you're scalping. Yeah. So, and, and I'm glad that uh, D Wiz did it that way. What I was just trying to get you to understand is in life, it doesn't matter how many times we level up. The way you keep money is by getting discounts, clearance. Oh, of and- course, bro. I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, yeah. that's. My, my mindset is like if you if you if you are if you are buying some if you are buying like a Ferrari or this and that a Gucci store you you need to know you need to understand and expect before you even come to that conclusion of what the price is going to be because if you don't and you're just saying like I want to go in a Gucci store and I don't know what the price is going to be then you setting yourself up for failure but if I'm saying like look I'm going to get a Ferrari and I'm expecting to pay two fifty to three hundred. If it's more than, you know, 300, I ain't going. You know, know. if it's less than... I'm um, about to store huh? with dollars, bro. I know I you have... Said what? I said, I see where you're going with it. It's more so, it's not saying that I don't want to look at prices. It's more so already knowing in hindsight, I'm not about to walk into the Gucci store with $500, but I'm going to walk... Exactly, into yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you, you, you just have to know what type of environment you're in. It's different, you know, environments for different things, but... But uh, yeah, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Where it's kind of answered, like my question: If I'm scalping, then you know, if, if it don't go right that one play at the entry, then you need to cut oh, your losses. Look, one thing I would tell you too, because I know you like to trade the same thing. You like to trade that profile. You like to trade the same thing, maybe. So you, you 
I think somebody got that. Uh, is that your mic or somebody else got that mic? Oh, that, that was me. I had my, my finger over my mic, my bad. Oh, um, right. but if, if, if anybody doesn't have their mic muted, can you please mute it? So one thing I would say too is um, you normally play Spy, Tesla, or QQQ, something of that nature. So just start right now. Like, look, check this out. If I was to go to Tesla right now, this is going to be zero DTE, right? So Tesla contracts normally will not be this price right at the money right yeah i don't need i don't i don't even do so, you know, i can't i can't do zero dtus for my oh uh, so. look check it out this is since you know that you're trading the same stock you don't have mm -hmm. to try to get the greeks all the time soon as you already know that your greeks look like this at the money right 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 this is what it's going to look like on monday monday is just going to be a little bit cheaper but it's still going to be like two thousand and some change right and this right. is what Greeks are going to look like, right? And if you go out the money, if you're somebody that always be going out the money, go to a psychological number like 900, you know mm -hmm. that this is always going to look like your Greeks, you're, that you're going to make $8 to $10 every time the underlying stock goes up a dollar, right? So right. Um, once you start having that, that uh, understanding of what your Greeks are going to be, because you keep trading the same stock, you're not going to have to look at that. You're going to be like, oh, no, going at the money, I already know, like Bank of America. I know it's going to give me anywhere between 60 to $70 at the money. You know what I'm saying? DBX. Right. Is, you know what I'm saying? So I know to go at the money. I know if I go out the money, I still have the possibility of making 50 to, to 40 bucks. So I know to load up on those contracts, right? So I don't have to, as you continue to do it, you're not going to have to look at your grease because you're going to know where your grease uh for that stock is that okay. yeah another thing that would help as well is writing down a weekly goal when you give yourself a weekly goal like hey i want to make a thousand dollars right or i let's just say i wanted to make it easy numbers i want to make five hundred dollars each week if that's what you want to make the wrong mindset to have is it's monday i need to make five hundred dollars five hundred dollars yeah yeah wrong, right have you're going to blow your account now that you have a weekly goal you break them down to daily goals your daily goal is a hundred dollars if i jump in a trade and i am at thirty dollars or fifty dollars guess what i'm trimming i'm cutting why because i am closer to my goal when i first started i was further away from my goal the some some people will have yeah, the that's, hey that's I'm where at, i'm at now like i'm kind of I'll I'll hit my goal one day and then the next day I'll I'll lose some of it and I'll be like, damn, now you know I'm trying to make up for the loss for the next day. So that's yeah, but don't don't have the mindset of you trying to make up for the loss. You're just trying to grow your portfolio. So like yeah. what I'm trying to say is like, say if you're at $30. Some people may start thinking like, nah, man, I'm closer to a hundred dollars. Let me just try to get closer to 50 bucks. That's the wrong mindset to have because now that you was at $30 and then, and then it goes back down to $15. Now you just lost a whole 15 bucks and you're like, dang, man, I want that $30 back. I'll take the profit there. And guess what? You're not going to take your profit at 15 because you're looking at 30 now. You know what I'm saying? And then that goes back to break even. Now you lost that trade and now you're in your head like, man, I could have made $30 today. You know what I'm saying? So just go ahead and grab those dollars and wait for another trade or wait for another setup. Guess what? You jump into that trade and now you make um, $20. You're at $50. Let's just say you ended your day with only making $50. Well, that's better than making no money or making less money. And you're still closer to your goal. Some days you're going to have to make a little more than a hundred dollars. Some days you're going to make less than a hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, I know you shouted me out. I believe it was you one time. I think it was. I don't know. No, no, it was somebody else. Uh, and they was like, man, shout out to you because uh, you hit your uh, goal pretty early. It was like a Wednesday and I hit my goal and I said, no, I'm done trading. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I, yeah. I remember in the beginning, you, uh, you, yeah, yeah, you said that. I hit my goal the previous week and kept trading. So the next week when I, I started trading, I hit my goal even quicker, even for the next week. So I didn't have to trade for a whole week. And that's how I do things where it's like, hey, I'm going hard this week. You know what I'm saying? I hit my goal, but I'm going to keep going. I just hit my goal five times. So next week, I could keep trading or I could take a break now. 
Cause I just, that, that last week, I just worked for five weeks. Now I can, oh, let me go to crypto. Oh, let me go to this place. Let me go to NFT. Let me learn about this. Let me see what I want to teach somebody now. Now I don't have to focus on trading. You know what I'm saying? And being my yeah. emotion because I am human. I got to also remember that I have my own emotions that I'm dealing with and then everybody else that's on the call. But yeah, does anybody else have any more questions? Let me run through this chat real quick. I get off. Hey, Moody. What's up? Man, you are a good. <laughs> I'm not a goat, bro. I want to be an angel. I don't even like goats. And I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm, joking. <laughs> I'm a deep thinker. Don't worry about me. Can you take a look at Apple? I swung one contract at 155 June 10th call. I went ahead and sold the other contracts I have for profits. Just wanted to get your thoughts. Yeah, no problem. I know my boy Zay swinging those. Um, I'll take a look at it in a second, man. I appreciate it, man. Drop it in the chat. Thank you. Which chart do you use for deciding if it comes above this level? I'm doing a call or put for scalping. Uh, most likely, I'm going to be using the one minute, the, the five minute. Um, I, uh, I, I really like the three minute. But I just enjoy my one minute. So it's always going to be one minute through five minutes for scalping, 15 minutes, just to like, where's the direction doing? Are we ranging? Are we at a high? Like when I say at a high, are we at a resistance? Are we at a support? Are we in the middle of the resistance uh, of um, the range, right? Things of that nature. What tab is this on a Discord? You're possibly talking about the educational tab when I was on there and it was called the option education tab where you can find um, the Weeble and a lot of stop loss information. Do you offer one-on-one -on -one trainings? I do offer one-on-one -on -one trainings. If you would like a one-on-one -on -one training, I will ask you not to DM me and open up a support ticket and we can definitely help you there. But please make sure to see what type of subscription you have. If you're a lifetime member, then open up a support ticket and we'll take care of you. Can you chart on multiple time frames for another stock? Just would like to see it again. Uh, dang, you want me to work? Uh, sure. How do you wait? Um, I might do it. I'm not, I, cause I say yes to everything. I might do it cause I'm, I'm really pressed for time, but I might do it um, when I get to the charts, like on Apple or something. Cause I am going to check out Apple for him. But, uh, I'm trying to structure my classes where it's like, hey, if I'm talking about this, let me talk about this. But I got you, my boy. Um, how long do you wait for your watch to look good before you actually buy the contracts immediately? Um, I don't even have a watch list like that. I just I look at candlesticks. If we're bullish, I'm going for calls. If we're bearish, I'm going for puts. Um, create class. Oh great class a lot of stuff clicked for me in this class that's what's up drop it in the testimonials man appreciate that that's all we're trying to do what do you look at when a stock is pulling back um i look for dojis i look for um bear flags bull flags these are all like patterns that pull back um handles on a cup and handle um i look for a uh, support what's the next support level um to see if it can go down to that support level who oh, d'angelo who's d'angelo that's d wit oh that was d wit that said that um i don't know who kelvin talking about <laughs> D Yo, so if y'all ever hear me say that, man, I'm talking about my boy D Wiz, man, but his name D Wiz. My bad. What's DTE? Zero DTE, um, zero expiration. Oh, day. Well, somebody just put it right there. I'll be saying it wrong sometimes, but it's the same day expiration or zero day to expiration. And oh, it's right here. Um, so trimming or scalping basically means that you have more than one contract and you're selling some, correct? No. Trimming means what you just explained. Scalping means uh, that's a form of trading. That's like day trading 
or swing trading. Scalping is a trader that's not trying to be in a trade no longer than like 15 minutes. Somebody that just sees the move, we're at support, we're taking it to resistance and scalpers buy a lot of contracts. <laughs> um, and reason being is because they're going to capitalize on the move and they're going to make their money and they're going to get right out. They're just trying to ride the wave with smart money and stay out the way of the dumb money. Yes, thanks. Thanks for sharing the Robinhood watch list feature. Absolutely, bro. I try to tell as much people as I can, bro. That shit helped me so much. If the price is a few cents away from your pay profit and it pulls back and you see a reversal, you know when to change your take profit before you break even. Uh, Take your right then and there. Um, there's no reason to like think of like, oh no, I see a reverse. Hold on, nah, bro, you're losing your profit. Take your money, get out the contract. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just set a limit order for the ask, and if it doesn't let you out right then and there, just put a dollar, a dollar down. Like if the ask is at twenty dollars and it didn't let you out, just put it at nineteen dollars and it'll kick you out. Um, if it's not moving too fast, but uh. <laughs> Um, I always try to take uh, profits on high candles. Like when I mean that, it's like full candles. I see it wick down. I'm, I mean, you, you're starting to lose too much profits right there. So like when it's running up, I'll be like trim, 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 because you'll be able to get out your contracts. Why? Because the stock price is normally higher than what it's saying it is. So they're gonna they're gonna let you out. Um, yes, Moody classes are every Thursday. Um, can you explain why, for instance, you can be negative in today's return and positive in total return? Uh, oh, she's talking about, yeah, that's because you chose to swing the contracts. So you're talking about this, like how you can see today's returns and total return. So today's return is just letting you know how much money you made today. You made 61% today. So you made an extra $417, which you also gain back some of the data that you lost from that day, right? Because automatically you take $43.71 from your total profit because that's what you're going to lose from the $827 for swinging it the next day for tomorrow, right? So your total, your total return is letting you know from when you entered this contract in or put it on your watch list, it is letting you know that that's the profits that it would have made starting from when you entered in. But since you've been in this contract and you've been swinging it, you're going to have a different total. You're going to have a different today's return because you've been losing profits due to theta and the market being open and it fluctuating up and down. Uh, next question. Thanks. Uh, would this be saved or rewatched? I missed some things. Nah, bro. I ain't trying to say nothing no more. And I'm joking. Uh, yeah, it's going to be in the mod video lessons. Uh, is going to be posted in there. Here, I'll just go to Discord. It's going to be posted. Oh, education. Education, education. Right here. Mod video lessons right here. Where my boy D Wiz just dropped some fire. Oh, there's a breakdown. Oh, you did a client. Oh, that's fire. I like that NFT. That's dope. Um, let me go back in here. Thanks. At time frames, do you normally make your borrowing for what time frame do I normally make my borrow information on? Uh, weekly, daily, hourly, um, 15 minute, sometimes five minute. I don't do them on a one minute. What Robin Hood watch list y'all talking about? Uh, the one that's on Robin Hood's watch list. Uh, or you go, or you got to do to make sure if you have it or don't have it, uh, go to any trade and double click on the thing. If it says it on the bottom that it added to your watch list, you have it. If you don't, then you're probably still in line to get it. Dang, I missed this call out. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that was, that was a call out from... Uh, leave with the bag he was trading tesla with jordan and jordan had called something out and he was like bro i like this one he's been in it or something like that and i was like bro what i'm jumping in but i didn't take 30 percent yeah uh i think that's what, that was all the questions let me go to the general chat make sure uh 
doom, doom, moody, high, high. And 923, what's going on, Rose? <laughs> you funny, Rose. <laughs> uh, I got you, Rose. Um, Moody Buzz, can you tag me to the option class? I'm late. Oh, dang, my bad, bro. You here, though. We made it. Oh, she took care of you. Yes, sir. But yeah, all right. So if anybody doesn't have any more questions, I'm about to jump off here. Um, so I'm more here so much. So Sit in the chair of the Hall of Famer. All right. Um, nobody has any last questions. Oh, that's what I was supposed to do. My bad, bro. Here you go. Apple. <coughs> Apple, Apple bull flagging. Ew. Apple. You're in calls. Good to be in calls, bro. I feel like Apple's going to break this resistance. Right, right, right. Let me check the weekly. Ooh, Apple's definitely about to break this resistance. Well, I feel like it, even though they have full time frame continuity to the downside um, on smaller time frames. Uh, it's just this inside bar being so close to going to up to trigger. So I definitely see Apple. Um, I definitely see Apple being bullish tomorrow. Right. And just let me see something before I start talking. Yeah, I definitely see Apple being bullish tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, we jumped over. Stop playing. Uh, are we pulling back? No, we're actually moving up. We're not pulling back. We're just going to go try to V-shape recovery, double top, come back down and go back up. Gotcha. Um, go back to Apple. Oh, hold on. Mm -hmm. Yes, baby. Engulfing. This is an engulfing candle right here for that person I was talking about it. Those are engulfing candles off a nice cup and handle. Check one more thing before I go back to Apple. Yeah, baby. It looks just like you. Yeah, I think it's going to break, bro. Did you notice all the stocks that I just went to look the same, right? Because it's a tech. Um, so... Definitely see Apple breaking. Um, it's breaking median right now. So that means it broke four hour. Pow, pow. Bull flagging us way to the top. Bull, pole flag, pole flag. I feel like you definitely will see 155 tomorrow. Definitely, definitely going to hit this target of 152.48. Definitely want to take some profits there. Uh, let's get you some other profits. So, I mean, uh, TPs. Yeah, it's a lot of accumulation right here. All right. So, all these new green ones that I just drew, and I'll just put it over to the daily so you can take a picture of it and put it on your chart. That's your targets right there, big bro. I see Apple at least. You might hit that 155. I, I want to see it to hit 155 to go go ahead and try to double top. But um, I, I think you'll definitely get 153 out of them. 153.83, the second target at least. You know what I'm saying? I definitely see that. Uh, I see them being bullish tomorrow. Uh, and then somebody asked about like, yeah, let me go to a random stock. That's not charge it. Um, if you can unmute your mic, if you're still on here, uh, what did you want me to do with the support and resistance line? Like, just draw them up fast. Okay, you're not on here. All right. Oh, let me check, check. Boom. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, you welcome, you welcome, you welcome, you welcome. How do you get the strat indicator? Yes, thanks for the breakdown and answering my questions. Of course, my boy. You know, thing. I would have answered that other girl's question, but I don't think she's on here anymore. Um, uh, the strat indicator. Uh, I'm on my phone, so what you will want to do is click this plus button, click indicator, go to the search engine, type in strat, and you have the choice of choosing candle strat. I mean, candle type the strat, or 
Shrat Assist. The one that I use is the second one, Shrat Candle Plus Open Levels. And that's how you in, that's how you put it on your indicator. And you can definitely check um, the last class that I had um, on the mod video lessons. And uh, I, I did a whole overview on it. But one thing that I am going to do, since I know a lot of people will be asking me um, a lot about the strap, I'm just going to create a strap video on how to on how to uh, apply it onto your chart. Um, so everybody can have a quick reference and could just uh, reference that video. Um, have a, I'm gonna have a really busy week next week. So um, I'm probably gonna postpone my uh, class probably. I don't know what day I'm gonna do it yet. Possibly do it on Saturday or Sunday or Monday. Still trying to figure it out. Um, but I will give you guys a heads up and let you guys know possibly jump on a live tomorrow, throw the screen up, um, help as many people as we can. Um, don't hold me to that. I don't know what time I'm going to get up, but I do have that um, in my plans to do for you guys tomorrow. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, the next chart class will be on support and resistance. Um, and what I'm going to start doing now is because I've figured out that I've been giving you guys information overload, I'm gonna start breaking things all the way down. Like say, if we do a pattern, if we're gonna do a pattern class, well, we're gonna do a pattern class about bull flags, bear flags. The next pattern class will be about cup and handles and inverted cup and handles or head and shoulders, just so we can drill down on how to see these patterns, identify them and how to trade them. Um, we're just gonna go a little bit more in depth and. Um, a little more crazier, but um, yeah. If anybody doesn't have any more questions, uh, I'm definitely about to jump off here. I'm gonna run to the chat one more time. Which platform are you using? I'm using Trading Views. When it comes to charts, I'm using TD or Mirror Trade. When it comes to day trading um, and small swings, I use Weeble for leaps and swings. And uh, I let my wife handle like shares, but she likes to use Robinhood. Trading views, yes, 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 please break it down. I am all new. Yeah, no, 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 bro. I got you. Trust me. Uh that's that support and resistance class. And the next week following up after that, I'm going to do a class probably like on trading views, like how to set up your trading views. But thank you guys for tapping in. I truly appreciate y'all. Y'all don't gotta go home, but y'all gotta get up off this Zoom. Yeah, dig. But um, yeah, appreciate y'all, man. Thank you so much for being here, man. Uh, D Wiz, thank you so much. You guys are all welcome. Love, love, peace.